trust this is on. It's wonderful to be with you this evening. I have personally been to California with my family years and years ago, but this is our very first time bringing our music to California, so this is very exciting for us. All of our team comes from the state of Wisconsin. That's a little unusual. Usually we have singers from kind of all over the United States, but we are all Wisconsinites here. We were still born in different states, but it's wonderful to be to California, and we were just thinking about how our tours a lot of times have a lot of firsts. And this tour is no different. We're first in California. Last night when we picked up our rental car, it is the first monstrous vehicle we've ever driven. That was just the one they gave us. I was in the parking lot, you know, which one is mine? Which one is mine? Thinking it'd be this little teeny SUV. No, it was huge. Uh, but we're thankful for it. It's nice and comfortable. It's a first. I have never sung with one of these on my head before. So all of us, this is a first. Um, but another last first is that uh, two of us actually got got sick last week so we are recovering from a cold and I have traveled for years and years and this has only ever happened one other time where I've had to really revamp a concert and so we have done our best God is giving us strength and this morning we got through our first concert but you will be hearing other helpful vocals from our track okay so we're going to be playing other vocals in fact some of them are men <laughs> so if you're hearing men you're not hearing us okay but we're thrilled to be here and to share really what God has uh, led me to write Kristen's going to share an original composition, but we're just here to lift the name of Jesus and lift his truth, and we trust that can be done here in our group tonight and that God is with us tonight. So we'd like to start uh, our program. <laughs> I wish I could step into history for a day and stand with Moses, Aaron, Miriam, and the host of Israelites on the other side of the Red Sea. I wish I could watch as the bodies of Pharaoh's conquered army washed up on shore one by one, those fierce enemies floating in, lifeless at their feet. After seeing God's power released on the land of Egypt, this scene was the crowning finale of God's triumph over their arrogant, hard-hearted ruler. God's story of deliverance was being written and unfolded before their very eyes, so graphic so awe-inspiring, so real. And I wish I could have heard the song they sang on that day. How fun to sing it with them. I wonder, why did they sing? Why is a brand new song a fitting response after such a victory? Who else does this? Not many comparisons come to mind. But we, the people of God, sing when God does something great. And we sing together a full choir of praise. He didn't just deliver a few Israelites, he delivered them all, so they all sang together. Exodus 15 verse 1 tells us that Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord. Perhaps it's a foretaste of the songs we will sing in heaven when all of God's enemies have been swallowed up in the sea of his wrath and we will find ourselves standing on heaven's shore, millions and more, and we will sing. I will sing, sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed, gloriously triumphed, he is my strength and my song. He is our God, and He has fought for us. Glorious in holiness, fearful in praise. His foes watch in wonder, their hearts melt away. But I, I will sing, I will sing. From all our Redeemed. Redeemed, you brought us out to the sea. We were standing with no place to go. That's when we heard those mighty winds blow. See splitting wonders we saw. We saw dust at our feet as we crossed. And our enemies followed us close. Then we watched on the shore as they sank like a stone. I will sing. Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed, gloriously triumphed. He is my strength and my song. He is our God, and he has fought for us. 
Glorious in holiness, fearful in praise. His foes watch in wonder, their hearts melt away. But I, I will sing, I will sing. Trembling and dread overcome, the hearts of the arrogant ones. Pharaohs and kings be afraid, our warrior will win, the Lord is his name. Battle of our fathers we claim, of our father. he'll lead us to his holy place. Troubles surrounded, yet we have passed through, among all the gods. Lord, who is like you, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed, has gloriously triumphed. He is my strength and my song. He is our God, and he has fought for us. Glorious in holiness, fearful in praise. His foes watch in wonder, their hearts melt away. But I, I will sing, I will sing, sing. The horse and the rider, the sea swallowed up. Your children delivered, your enemies crushed. Today you have triumphed forever. Your reign, we're filled up with wonder. We're filled up with wonder. We're filled up with wonder. We cannot contain. And I'll sing, sing to the Lord, for He has triumphed, gloriously triumphed. He is my strength and my song. He is our God, and He has fought for us. Glorious in holiness, fearful in praise. His foes watch in wonder, their hearts melt away. But I, I will sing, I will sing, I'll sing. It's great to be with you this evening. My name is Heather Schaff. I am from Eau Claire, Wisconsin, the cheese state. My husband is the pastor of Lighthouse Baptist Church in Eau Claire. I think we have a family picture coming up here eventually here. Dun, da, 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 da. There we go. <laughs> That's my family. My husband is a pastor of Lighthouse Baptist Church. As you can see, we have four children, Jacob, Reagan, Tovia, and Brady Drew. Two of them are actually the, just a few months ago. We sent them off to college. So it's a very different season in our home, uh, but a good season. I'm glad where they're at and how they're doing. So that's my family. I am Kristen Keekafer, and those are my people. Yes, <laughs> that's my husband, Adam, and we have three children, Ames, Timmy, and Kendall. They are uh, oh my goodness, how old are they? They're 9, <laughs> 10, and 12. <laughs> One's going to be 13 soon. That's why I was confused, guys. <laughs> it's good to be here. My husband and my husband is the director of bands in our local public school district, um, where he's very, very, very busy. And um, I'm very active doing music in our community, and we both serve as church, our church lead musicians. And it's just ex very exciting. It's great to have a meal with you tonight, and it's good to be here in Porterville. My name is Sarah O'Reilly, and this is actually my first time ever in California, so I'm very excited. <laughs> uh, this is my husband, Chris, and he's a pastor of Emmanuel Baptist Church in Wasaki, Wisconsin, which is a super tiny town north of Green Bay, about an hour. And he's 14 inches taller than me, so I really need height in the family. Uh, and all the kids are taking after him. Hannah's 10, and Harmony is 6. Logan is 8, right in the middle. And I'm Trisha Brown. My husband is Paul, and we have four children, Callie, Laura, Jr., and Tegan. They are 16, 14, 12, and 10. And we are originally Arizona natives, and so God called our family to Watertown, Wisconsin, a little over a year ago after 20 years of ministry in Arizona. God moved us to Maranatha to serve the Lord in a new state. So we're glad, I'm glad to be back in the West, so thank you for having us. <laughs> 
And since we are brand new to California, I, I enjoy introducing our ministry, Forever Be Sure. We started back officially in 2008, but it was about a year and a half prior to that that my sister, my only sibling, my, my sister, wrote a song. Her and I both graduated from college with a Bible and music degree, but we had never composed a song before. And so she played that song for our family. And I was blessed by it. It was written out of a difficult time in her life. But I was probably even more so inspired that she took the initiative to do that. It takes a lot of work to write a song, to write all the lyrics and all those little black dots on the page. It just, it's a lot of details. And so I, I was blessed by it, but I was like, boy, I would... I might enjoy this myself. As a child, I wrote poetry just out of different life circumstances or just for enjoyment. Um, of course, I loved music, and I love sharing. I'm very expressive, I guess. And so all those three, three things combined, and I thought, hey, let's, let's, let's write music together as a family. And so we started that way back in 2006. And God has just kept fueling us ever since. You know, we have you know ups and downs and dips and motivation and all that, but he keeps giving me stuff to write about. So this program that we're sharing with you tonight is all original music. It's like my spiritual diary. Now we do have some hymns that are oldie but goodie hymns that we'll, we'll share with you as well. Um, but there are fresh arrangements of it too. And so, but I'm on the same journey you're on if you know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. I'm no different. I know I'm here on the stage and you're sitting in the pew, but I am no different. I'm a sinner saved by grace and I just, I just enjoy music and I enjoy writing music and it's a privilege to share this with you this evening. So there's ups in our Christian life and there's downs and I write songs everywhere in between and God has been faithful to me just like he's been faithful to you in teaching you and growing you. My biggest passion is to put scripture into song and or scripture, you know, what God is teaching me specifically from scripture and scriptural allusions. And so this next song, we're going to actually sing two right in a row, but this next song, Under Your Wings, um, my friend who used to sing with us, um, she, her mom was going through some medical treatment, and so they weren't really sure what the diagnosis would be. But in that in-between time, she texted me three passages of scripture. And they, I, I meditated on them for my devotions one day, and they were just some powerful truths that I know everybody needs to cling to. Psalm 112, verse 7 says, He, speaking of the righteous, shall not be afraid of evil tidings, bad news, but his heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. Psalm 57, 1 and 2 says, Be merciful unto me, O God, be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee, and in the shadow of thy wings I will make my refuge until these calamities have been passed by. Psalm 71, 3 says, Be thou my strong habitation, or my refuge, to which I may continually resort. And our Father is that for us, and I love that. And we love to sing the song, Under Your Wings. After that, we're going to sing uh, one from the hymnal, It Is Well With My Soul, kind of on some of the same themes. We're thankful for, for these truths. Give me a heart that's fixed upon you, not afraid, only trusting. Held by your hand, my soul is secure through the storm, through the testing. Under your wings, my refuge will be, until these winds have passed over me. Like a child who fears no alarm, quietly trusting in all that you are, quietly trusting in all that you are. Give me a mind that stayed upon you, not afraid, simply resting, never to fear at troublesome news, though it tries to overwhelm me. Under your wings, my refuge will be. A child who fears no alarm, quietly trusting in all that you are, quietly trusting in all that you are, quietly trusting, quietly trusting. There is a place, is a place for me, it is sure, it's forever. Forsaken, under your wings, my 
trusting in all that you are, quietly trusting in all that you Without God knowing it, right? He is sovereign, and we are thankful for that truth. Two weeks ago, my dad actually was admitted to the hospital and diagnosed with heart failure, and he was being treated for AFib and high blood pressure, and during that first procedure, his heart dropped to a 10% capacity, so the doctors didn't know if he was going to make it through the second procedure. And through that time, we saw God answered prayer. People around the world were praying for him, and with an hour, we saw him take to the device that was um, put inside his body to help his heart, and that didn't mean he was out of the woods because he had to deal with a kidney, um, kidney injury, but it was amazing to see how our family pulled together, my mom and our siblings. I'm from 13, so we were around the clock um, at the hospital, but when I landed in Phoenix, um, my text coming through were just showing how my family my siblings were fatigued, they were exhausted, they needed some encouragement. And it was that same day in God's perfect timing that 
Our next song, Carry Me Father, was posted on social media. And that song just really was an encouragement to our family. And it brought tears, but it was an encouragement. And we got to talk and just share and praise God for how his loving arms just carried us through that time. We got to be reminded how faithful he is because our good shepherd carries us through trials and triumphs. And so it's just a good reminder to remember that God, through our difficulties, carries us through the difficulties that he places in our lives. Carry me, Father, carry me through All of my hoping is bound up in you I have reached the end of what these hands can do And moving a mountain is easy for you five years old has become more precious to me. So I'm about 36 years old in the Lord, 41 years old. I'm not ashamed to admit that now that I got over the hump. <laughs> Once I got over that hump, we're fine. 
Um, but the Lord has been very faithful, and I'm so thankful that in these last few five, six, seven years, I should just say progressively, really, that gospel message of good news has become so much more precious to me, especially on Communion Sunday. Our church um, observes that every once a month, and so every time it's just, Lord, thank you. Like, I'm appreciating it more. The more I realize what a sinner I am, what I'm saved from, the more I appreciate what Christ sacrificed for me. And, and I'm so thankful for that. I'm, I'm reminded even every communion Sunday, every time we finish communion, we sing that hymn, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. And I'm reminded that we are going to remember Christ's death for all of eternity. We're going to remember that that's why we're there. That's how we could get there and spend eternity with God, a holy God. Um, because it's G- Jesus Christ, his son, made us holy because, uh, because of sacrifice for us. And I'm so thankful for that. We love singing this next song. I, you know, I like to have change up in a tour. I go on about <laughs> six trips, five, six trips a year. But this song makes it into every program. And we love it because, you know, it's the gospel. And we, like we want to share the gospel, obviously, in our concerts. But it also gives you an opportunity to participate. You didn't know you were coming to sing tonight, I bet. <laughs> but you're going to sing tonight if you're able on verses 4 and 5 of this familiar hymn. If you're able to stand and join with us then, there'll be instructions and words on the screen. We would love it if you could join in and worship. This is not just our testimony. If it's your testimony, you should want to erupt in, in worship as well, right? We're going to sing the familiar song, Hollow. Hallelujah, what a Savior. And I put a little shine to it, my own little version of it. So we'll sing the first three verses, and then we'll invite you to join with us. And please sing your heart out as we sing Hallelujah, what a Savior. Hallelujah. 
<laughs> <laughs> and so is a contentious woman. And so I wrote this next song, called it the Drip Drip Song, recorded it, and we just had some fun with it. And then I just enjoy visual humor, enjoy acting. And so I bought some wigs, and I got behind my camera at home in my basement, and we just had some fun. And so for your audio and visual pleasure, we would like to share with you the Drip Drip Song. <laughs> Thank you. 
Last year, oh, what is it? What is it? 2023. I get so confused because I plan for 2024 during 2023. So I'm like, what year am I in? Last year, I, I took on a daunting task for me. It's probably normal for many, many of you in this room and good for you to read the Bible through from cover to cover in one year. And I know that's a fantastic habit, but I was too scared to do it for, for a very long time because I'm a slow reader. And so, but last year I did, and I'm so very glad I did. I would recommend it. Uh, some people read the Bible, or their, their plan re reads for depth, and others read for breadth, and it had been a while since I had read for breadth from cover to cover, and it's so rich and worth it. But I listened a lot to scripture, that goes faster, and I think my brain handles that better. So I was listening to scripture as I was walking around my neighborhood, and I was in 1 Corinthians 15. And that chapter just came alive to me again that day. It's about the resurrection of Jesus Christ and how his resurrection gives us hope in this life. There is lots of discouragements in this life. And if you think about it, I mean, I know I'm only 41, and I do not want to be among my age on stage. I did that one time, and I got booed, and so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm still a young whippersnapper, apparently. Um, but aging is, is hard, you know, and I, you know, I, it just kind of seems to be a downhill progression too. And so that can be frustrating. And so 1 Corinthians 15 gives us hope in that because, because Christ raised, we will also raise. And I like to think of it too, even as we gather tonight and, and you gather at, at church every Sunday, I'm just here to tell you it would be a grand waste of your time, of your pastor's time, if Christ was not alive today. But because he's alive, we have every reason to come here tonight and worship through song. Every reason to come on Sunday. Because Jesus is alive. He is real. Our sins can be forgiven through his blood. And that's every reason to hope. I have a friend, Joe, at my church. She's an older, sweet lady, sweet sister, who is likely to see her Savior face to face very soon. Whether weeks or months, we're not sure, but she is digressing. Cancer is taking over her body, but she is the happiest person I know. And she's busy. I mean, yes, she stays at home. She's a shut-in, but she labors in prayer. She encourages everybody. She, her calendar, she showed me her calendar. It's full of people coming to visit her, and she just takes joy in every opportunity to share Christ with them. And her labor is not in vain in the Lord. And the last verse in that, um, in that chapter... 1 Corinthians 15 is that verse we love. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast. Because of Christ's resurrection, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. My friend Jo is not letting anything move her, not letting anything stop her until she sees her Savior. This next song is called, Let Nothing Move You. Let nothing move you, let nothing move you, let nothing move you, nothing move you, let nothing move you, let nothing move you, let nothing move you, nothing move you, nothing. Nothing move you, let nothing move you. Our resurrection is coming soon. The earth is groaning, our bodies moaning, but there's a future for me and you. If Christ is lifeless, his power silenced, then all good pity our empty faith. But God is stronger. He rose and conquered. Let nothing move you. Let nothing sway. Let nothing move you. Let nothing move you. Let nothing move you. Let nothing move you. The second Adam he has come before. His great is hollow. Stars will follow, death is swallowed, to win no more, stand unshaken on this foundation, though tribulations may tremble and quake, make your profession the work of heaven, for nothing's forgotten, 
nothing is vain. Let nothing move you, nothing move you. He will clothe us in endless light. Our raptured bodies will be walking, will be crossing to paradise. Unending splendor is what we wait for, to raise with power our bodies changed. So now we labor, we stand unwavered for God and On the Savior reigns in your soul, let nothing move, let nothing move you, Christ is risen, let nothing move you, Christian, this is our hope for you, fix your faith on the Savior family favorite um, for a variety of reasons. I have three younger children and we have gone through phases where each one of them is scared of the dark or has a bad dream and we tried reasoning with them why they shouldn't be scared of the dark and it did not really work. <laughs> uh, so we started you know memorizing scripture and we would sing this song together at night and it helped them not be afraid. Well as an adult I may not struggle with fear at night, fear of the dark, but when I lay down at night to sleep because I need it, God created me to need rest, my brain just turns on. Like, I am just like, okay, this is what I need to do or didn't get done. And so often my response is to get out of bed and then clean my house because the <laughs> only time it's actually clean is if I do it at night when everyone's sleeping. But then I'm completely exhausted the next day, and I've just been letting all those burdens and cares uh, make me you know, not get the rest that God created me to need. So my husband approached me one day on it, and he's like, honey, you know, I really don't think you should be staying up and doing that because you're <laughs> exhausted the next day. I was like, oh, but nothing ever gets done. And he had to reassure me that, you know, God gave us exactly the amount of hours that we needed in a day to get things done, and there's always going to be stuff to do. And um, I discovered Psalm 121, I believe it's verses 2 and 3, that talks about how our God never sleeps and never slumbers, but he's constantly working on our behalf. I thought, wow, I don't have to worry. I don't have to stay up and do all these things. I know God is going to work everything out for tomorrow. And so that is what I have been trying to meditate on when it gets to that late hour at night and remember that I don't serve a God that's just active during the, night, the daytime, but he's also the king of the night. When the stars begin their long ascent And the sun has put itself to bed Weary ones you crafted from the dust Now must close their eyes and simply trust King of the night, you rule when I am sleeping sky are still in your safe keeping. So like a child and rat, I'll go to sleep confessing you are King, King of the night. 
so they tremble neath their hearts. I feel strong with sunlight all around. Yet how frail am I when darkness falls. King of the night, you rule when I am sleeping. The earth and sky are still in your safe keeping. So like a child at rest, I confessing you. about oh my goodness it's getting to be more and more time now I have to think <laughs> a little more about 10 years ago uh, the Lord brought something into our family's life that um, was very 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 much a life-changing experience and have you ever not known how to pray for something like you get on you you come to the Lord and your heart is heavy and you just don't know what the words to say and sometimes it gets just, just gets frustrating. And then you, some, for me, I just start crying <laughs> because I, there's so much emotion pent up in my heart that that's just what it leads to is just weeping. Um, we were on our way home from church. We found out that we got a phone call from the doctor when I was pregnant with my third child um, that they found some abnormalities and some blood work in the baby. And that's terrifying to a mom. And I remember we were at a Wednesday night service after we had found out about this, and it was the night before we were supposed to go in for an ultrasound to kind of confirm the severity of, she uh, was diagnosed with severe spina bifida, um, which would, her spine would be not developed. And um, she ended up with water on her brain, hydrocephalus, and it was just a lot going on. And we were supposed to go in and find all those things out the next day, but we were with our church family on a Wednesday night, and we were all praying, and I love my church family. They just sent me a picture today of my daughter sitting at the table with one of the other ladies in the church. She's like, she's my best friend today. <laughs> and just the mentorship is sweet. Um, but I remember on our way home from church, I thought about what a lady in our church had said that night. She came up to me. She said, Kristen, I am praying, and I know God is going to heal your daughter 100%. He's going to make her well, and I have faith in that. I hugged her. I thanked her. But have you ever had it when, when there's something like that is happening in your life, you want to believe that that would be the truth, but the Holy Spirit has told you otherwise and gives you a calmness and a peace to accept what's going to happen before it happens. That's how I felt. And so I went home, and as a result, I didn't know how to pray at all. I felt like a terrible mom 
because I didn't feel it was the right thing to pray for my daughter to be healed. And I felt selfish. But then at the same time, to, to not pray for it, I felt like a terrible mother. Like, who doesn't want to pray for their child to be healed? And I was so conflicted. And I remember that night just falling on my knees and crying because I didn't know what to say and I didn't know what to do. And it was a lot happening, a lot of new things. And just these past couple of weeks, I've been going through some things too, just trying to trust the Lord with some situations and taking care of my daughter. And I was telling Sarah on the flight over how I'm just, I'm just tired. Are you ever just tired? I, I see faces, and I know behind every face is a story. Everyone has something because it's life, and we are human, and we are born unto trouble. I don't know what it is. But in Romans 8, that came to my mind that night when I was on my knees just weeping. The Holy Spirit's so good to minister to us that way. And in Romans 8, it says that the Spirit makes intercession for us with groanings that can't be uttered because he knows the mind and will of the Father. When we have, we have no words, the Holy Spirit knows, and he's praying for us. I ended up writing this song called, You Will Pray For Me, as a result of that situation in our lives. I hope it's a blessing to you. When hope turns hopeless, my weary heart grows worn, my pillow drenched in tears for each desire torn. The goodness that I gripped, your goodness stripped away. Empty hands I lift to you, I don't know how to pray. The torment in my soul struggle to convey I fear my heart's deceit I don't know how to pray I don't know how to pray but you will pray for me oh spirit divine mine, my comfort ever near. You see each falling tear. You know my deepest need, and you will pray for me. You will pray for me. Speechless I come again, and speechless I remain. Silent are my heart and mind, I don't know how to pray. Those to whom I always turn, and places where I hide, fail to give my soul relief, my burdens cast aside. I feel the weight of darkness. It presses and faith flees. The truth I know seems far away. Oh, who will pray for me? Oh, who will pray for me? You will pray for me. Oh, Spirit divine. me faithful help of mine my comfort.
comfort ever near. You see each falling tear. You know my deepest need, and you will pray for me. You will pray for me. been really great to have Kristen's contributions to our, our music ministry. She wrote that one, and then I think there's three others that you've written, and uh, she's a very talented and obviously authentic, too, and so we're privileged to have a couple others on board with our music ministry. Um, we have one last song to share with you um, this evening, but before we do, I wanted to quick invite you to those tables you cannot miss. If you turn around, those big red tablecloths, <laughs> we brought our whole collection, and we have seven uh, physical CDs available back there. We have, as we speak in production, um, a brand new CD almost ready to come out. Lord willing, I mean, the release date is October 15th, but it's probably not going to arrive at our doorstep until about the 18th to the 24th, but you can pre-order if you want an actual CD or even pre-order a digital CD. Five of the songs from this concert, I believe, are on that CD, so just a little plug there. Um, but we, if you, if you don't, if you have a car that does not have a CD player, I understand that's a thing these days. Uh, we're going digital and we're going there fast, but I can get you digital albums as well. I can email them to you tonight. So see me back at the table. Um, the piano number that I played, um, was from a collection my mom and I put together a while back. Um, two piano books, Calendar of Praise and Calendar of Worship. There's 12 songs in each, one kind of fitting for each month of the year. And then we have a Christmas piano book, and then our last printed product is our choral book. Once we sell out of those printed books, we don't plan to reprint because we too are going to dive into the <laughs> digital age, and we're just going to do digital choral books. Um, I manage some online platforms. We have our website, foreverbesure.com. And if, oh, yeah, you can skip that one. We do have QR codes, but... I'm still in process of figuring that all out. <laughs> um, but do visit our website. All of the music that we've produced um, is, is there and available as instant downloads, whether it be a full book or just one song or one accompaniment or whatnot. It's all there. So check out foreverbeacher.com. And then, again, our YouTube channel. We've got a, a bunch of uh, videos that we post probably six to eight weeks. We post a new video. Um, but, yes, yeah, subscribe. We have a list back there. We'll, we have enjoyed our time in California for the day we've been here. And so maybe we'll come back soon. We'd love it. So keep track of our travels by subscribing. And I send out about two to three emails a month. And um, just keep track of our ministry and the new songs that we're writing. It's just a, a joy to, to kind of keep communicating with, our, with people that have enjoyed our music. And so this last slide I slipped in there a few tours ago. Um, my dad is a full-time fundraiser for a, a for Faith Baptist Bible College. I don't know if you heard of that from way out here in California. I know that there's, I'm hearing a lot of Maranatha, so you're very familiar with Maranatha, which is an awesome college too. Um, but he, my dad, has been really instrumental in helping me understand that nonprofits get supported by people who really get behind you and who love what you're doing and want to help you in that way financially. And so we've seen that happen in our ministry, and it's been a very faith-building experience for me. So if that happens to be you, I'd love to chat afterwards. And we're just excited for how God has provided through those means. We'd like to share with you one last song. Um, it's called At the Sight of Crimson Red. And it's we started this program in the book of Exodus. And we're going to end, not in Revelation, but in Exodus. <laughs> there are some fantastic stories in the book of Exodus. So much so that you'll see those stories repeated all throughout Scripture. Even in Psalms, it'll talk about the dividing of the Red Sea and the conquering of kings. I mean, there's just some fantastic stories of God's deliverance. And so as I was reading my Bible last year, I came across that story, and apparently those thoughts just really began to mull over in my mind. And especially this, this one about the Passover. My husband and I last September were painting our garage. We are having an open house for one of my children, and so we wanted to spruce things up. And I will be honest, uh, we were getting a lot done, but I was not in a good mood. <laughs> I was painting, but we were painting in silence. And, uh, you know, I was, I was just, you know how it is, I don't know, maybe you're like me, where 
you, you struggle with an offense or whatever, but then it kind of quickly morphs into guilt. Just this load of guilt. Why can't I be a better person? Why can't I be kinder? Why can't I just overlook things and get <laughs> over it? Well, it's hard. It's hard. And so that's where my heart was until I came to painting the door frame of the door that led into my house. And that is when, as Kristen said, the Holy Spirit brings verses to mind. And as I'm sitting here wallowing in guilt, he reminded me of the children of Israel who painted the blood over the door frame. And that is all they needed to do to escape God's wrath. And in a, in, the, in a very real sense, that is a picture of our salvation. We are sinners, and all we have to do is place our faith in the blood of Jesus Christ and his sacrifice for us. It seems too easy, but that's what he says to do. Thrust yourself wholly on him. Paint the blood over your door frame and depend on him and his work for you. So it was through those thoughts that I wrote this next song that we it's a joy to share with you. At the sight of crimson red. <laughs> How I love to tell of the great escape on Egypt's darkest night. This story has such a special place in this needy heart of mine. I'm amazed to think the only thing to be spared from certain death was a simple faith put on display. Over doors adorned in red. A perfect lamb so innocent, a chosen lamb would die. And I can almost hear him sing before that faithful night. I will dip my brush in the saving blood and all around my door I will paint the stain of another's pain through grateful tears adored nothing else I need but a covering that a spotless lamb has shed heaven's wrath will flee passing over me at the sight of crimson red, at the sight of crimson red. Oh, oh, oh crimson red. Oh, the countless ways, the countless days fallen short of him, and the enemy, the enemy of the land he will accuse me of my sin. But the boundless bliss, there's hope for this, there's a cure to which I cling. With a simple faith, Christ's blood I claim, now I'm clean before the King. Perfect lamb, so perfect lamb, he died for me. Yes, I, I will see to the guilt inside. To all the guilt, I have dipped my brush in the saving blood, and all around my door, I have laid the stain of another's pain. Through grateful tears adorned, nothing else I need but a covering that the spotless lamb has shed. Heaven's wrath will flee, passing over me at the sight of crimson red, at the sight of crimson red. Heaven's wrath will flee. Save 
for the message it was very clear and if you have any questions about the message please don't leave without checking with one of us but the relationship we talked about a good time at Sierra Hills this afternoon and preached the message on Psalm 23 again this morning and this morning a great response there continue to pray for one another we have folks going through trials I just heard that Tom Moran is going to have to have open heart surgery on Tuesday up at Coa Delta and uh, George we're not sure what's going to happen to George yet so what, we're, what we're, we're sending the CSI experts out there to check for blood samples to make sure that, <laughs> and so, but uh, continue to pray for them. And Shirley is any better today, Don? She's getting discouraged. Okay, if you get a chance, ladies, give her a call. Go by and see her. Well, give her a call first, and then, then go by. I know they've got Grand Central Station over at the house over there, but uh, they didn't know they were opening a motel when you bought that house, did you? And so. <laughs> <laughs> if there's a vacancy they move in that's right and so be in prayer for one another be an encouragement uh, we do have anniversary cake uh, and so we'll have that afterwards and so uh, and I think uh, whose table was it William was it your table that gets to go first on the dessert yes okay good <laughs> grandma says yes that's where we're going <laughs> Okay, <laughs> and so we'll get that out in the kitchen here in just a few minutes and uh, praise the Lord for the years he's given us and we want uh, many more faithfulness, you know. Uh, the sad thing I was mentioning to them that the, the church where we were in Mishawaka for six years uh, contacted them and they're not taking the same stand they were taking before. Uh, I wondered why when, they, when I called them twice they never called me back and I went to the website and I found out there's been a change. And so uh, we, don't, we don't stay the same just to stay the same. But we, and I appreciate this music. It is, it is new music, but it's not contemporary music. And I'm not going to preach a message on contemporary music this time. You all know where we, where we stand on that, don't you? But our announcements for the week, uh, of course, Wednesday night, we have uh, be, uh, going, continuing through First Peter. And we'll have the children's uh, ministry going on. And then we'll have our uh, prayer time and choir. And then on Thursday night, ladies, what's going on Thursday night? Women's ministry. And that is for which women in the church? All women. Very good. Thank you, Mary Jane. That's good. We got that. And so, uh, and uh, ministry council, men will be, will be meeting also. And then on Saturday, we have our, our planning meeting for uh, 2024, because yes, we're planning for that too. We got to start, you know. And so that'll be at 9 o'clock on Saturday morning. Anybody's welcome to come. I've already had a few ideas thrown at me, and, and that is great, and we'll look forward to that. And so, uh, but, you know, tonight we appreciate the ladies. I appreciate Jeff, too, because I just threw the email at him. I said, Jeff, go for it. And, uh, and he, you scared him, though. The one video, the dripping one, that scared Jeff. Jeff is single. <laughs> he may never get married but <laughs> we have to be careful with how we expose these young people in the church there <laughs> and so he said pastor some of those ladies are scary <laughs> it's good to meet them in person though isn't it Jeff yeah that, he, he's feeling better now so <laughs> well let's continue to pray also for the ladies as they move on where's your next stop tomorrow Newberry Springs going out to the, the, the oasis in the wilderness. <laughs> 
does. <laughs> well, okay, anyhow, out to, out to Camp Ironwood. And so uh, that's a nice short trip. And so you'll have a good time out there with them at, uh, at uh, Cherokee Road Baptist Church. Okay, so pray for them as they continue. You've got two weeks out here, is that right? Or? Ten concerts. Okay, good. Because then you go back up to San Francisco and you're going to back and forth, back and forth. Well, welcome to California. That's what we do all the time. And so, so let's be in prayer for that. And, uh, and then so we'll have, let's stand. We'll close a word of prayer. But seriously, uh, tonight has not been about entertainment. It's about ministry. And I love the last song to the blood on the doorpost is definitely something that we need to remember. That it's not because of us, it's because of his sacrifice on the cross, the lamb. Uh, our visitor that was here this morning from my, from my uh, uh, illustration from Walmart where I, I talked to him, he walked out and he goes, well, pastor, he goes, there's, there's no lambs in God's family. We're all his children. I said, okay. And I just, we'll see what happens. But uh, <laughs> it, it was, uh, yeah, interesting conversation. But God puts us in strange places for the opportunity to reach out to folks. So let's bow for prayer, please. Father, we thank you for the message that went forth tonight. We thank you for these ladies, for the way you use them, the talent you've given them. And just bless them now as they continue on. Give them safety and travel and use them in each of these churches that they'll be ministering to here in California. And uh, give them safe trip. Pray for their families as they have been willing to let them go on this trip. We thank you, Lord, for all the, the men that work tonight to get the, the meal ready, the ladies, and the, the blessing the meal was. And uh, we thank you for Jeff's work on the PowerPoint and the live stream and all that. And Lord, we just pray that we might take the ministry that took place tonight and take it with us as we leave and go forth from here as a thankful people, praising you for all you've done and what you continue to do in our lives. Some folks, Lord, are going through deep times. We pray especially for Shirley right now as she's discouraged. We pray for George. as We know there's discouragement there in, in uh, the problems he's having now with his back. And Lord, we just thank you that you are a God who delights in answering our prayers even when we don't know what to pray. And we look forward to seeing these, these testimonies fleshed out in our lives also. And we leave these things in your hands, looking forward to what you alone can do. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, and if you'll wait a few minutes, we'll have some cake.